Good morning, everyone. It's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're getting ready to work on um, Graphic 45's travel journal. So I already took everything out, but I want to show you that there's elastic that runs through the back, and uh, this uh, journal comes with three inserts, and I've removed all of those because we're going to decorate everything. But we're going to start with the cover. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and do the inside right now, and then we're going to do the outside second. I'm going to add some ribbon. Uh, instead of using this elastic band that, that goes around the top, I'm going to use some ribbon that we're going to tie in a bow, and I think that'll put less stress on your cover. I think dragging um, an elastic band across the front of a decorated cover is going to you know, lead to some damage. So I've got a, an alternative plan for that. <clears throat> So let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to use this honeycomb pattern and I cut it down to four and three eighths by six. Four and three eighths by six. You're going to round the left corner on this one and the right corner on this one. Okay, so four and three eighths by six. And that should slip into your pocket. I'm going to verify that works, and it does. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add some glue to the back of this, and we're going to leave that leading edge without glue so that it's easy to get into the pocket. Oh, the cap is stuck. Set this aside real quick. Get my glue on here, maybe. There it is. Everything used in this project comes from, is a 12 by 12 sheet cut down. And I, um, the reason, oops, I put glue all the way down. I didn't mean to do that. The reason that you want to use 12 by 12 in this to decorate this is that the cover is nine inches tall. So you're going to, if you want to use your eight by eights, you're going to have to um, add a, you know, color block on every single page of the covers. Oh, come on. There we go. That side went in. <clears throat> Let me get out my um, damp wipe because it doesn't take long for me fingers to get covered in glue. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to do the same thing and this time I'm going to try to remember to leave my leading edge clean. It just makes it so much easier. goes in easier than the other. I don't know why. Okay, there we go. A little bit of glue on the top here. Okay, and then um, this pattern is called the Busy Bee. So you're going to trim this down to three and three eighths. By four and three eighths. So it's three and three eighths tall and four and three eighths across. It's going to go right here on the pocket. Now we've got a couple of op options uh, as far as um, cutting out the notch. One is to slip it inside the pocket, which I'll do right now, and um, the hardest part is to getting it to go all the way down. There we go. Slip it in the pocket and trace it. <clears throat> and you'll want to do each one independently because they may not be perfectly centered or, or match exactly. And here it is. I'm going to trace that. 
And we're going to cut it out. So there's a couple options for cutting it. We're going to trace it no matter what. You can slip your circle punch over this and punch it, line up your lines, or you can use some curved scissors and hand cut it, which I'm going to do one of each. I'm going to hand cut this one. I'm going to punch the other. So I'm going to hand cut it, and then we're going to test it. And you don't have to use curved scissors. I find that I get a smoother line, but if all you have is straight scissors, then use those. I'm having a hard time. I can't see. My light's terrible. I'm going to go over that one more time. Cut it a little bit deeper. Get rid of my pencil line. That's much better. I can see what I'm doing at this angle. Okay, let's lay it in and see how it looks. It probably need I need to cut it out a little bit deeper so that we have a nice uh, mat around it. So I'm gonna go over that one more time. So based on where the trace line is, you're gonna to wanna to cut on the other side of it. And then if you're using a circle punch, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you place your punch uh, past your pencil line. <clears throat> oh, and you know what? I know what I did wrong now. When you put this in, you don't want to push it all the way down. You want to push it even. That's what I did wrong. You want to push your paper even with the pocket. If you push it even with the pocket and trace it, then you'll have that natural um, <clears throat> mat it will map where you want it to. There we go. I'm going to cut a little more off this side. It's a little fussy, but I think you need an inch and a half punch. There we go. I like that a little bit better. An inch and a half punch um, to make this, to use a punch to cut it out. <clears throat> so I, I'm happy with that, I think. I'm going to ink it and we're going to lay it down. <clears throat> And by inking it, you're going to cover, you're going to knock off that white core, and that's going to cover up a, a lot as far as um, making it blend into the, the pocket itself. There we go. So that looks pretty good. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. If you're going to use a, a wet wipe, make sure it's not too wet. Um, there's a chance you could warp your paper. Okay, here we go. And now this one, we'll do it right in the first place. We're going to slip it in and make it even. Sorry, I'm, I'm sure I was off camera. Make it even with the pocket. There we go. Now we'll trace it. <clears throat> now I'm going to get my punch real quick.
Okay, so we're going to put it inside our punch and we're gonna make sure that the pencil line, that we're above our pencil line. Okay. Ooh, that's kind of a dull um, punch. Okay, now I'm gonna take a little bit more off each edge. So the problem is, We've got a one and a half inch punch and we've got a one and a half inch um, notch. So in order to have it have a nice uh, mat all the way around it, we need to cut a little bit off the edges, which I'm going to do. After I get it centered, I'm going to mark it real quick. So I know I want to cut it. That's a little low. Basically from this tick mark to... about here, and from here to about there. I'm just gonna hand draw a little line and I'm gonna cut along that and blend it into the punch I've already made. <clears throat> now, if you don't wanna fuss with any of that, you can just mount it as a rectangle right here. Um, and if I was gonna do that, I'd come up even, I wouldn't have a black border. Now, the other thing you can do is do a half inch punch and um, like so, to fill in your gap, and just do it with, with uh, black cardstock and have it run across. So let me show you what I mean real quick. So here's my, I said half inch, but one and a half inch punch. And um, I would just mark it either side and bloop, cut it across. I'm gonna do this rough-handed. So you want it as straight as possible. Make it flush, scotch tape. Because it's not gonna show. Tape it into place. Lay your rectangular mat down, and basically you've got a consistent black line across the top. Now it's not significant with this pattern because it is black, so I think I would just go right up to the edge and forget, a forget about it, doing a black border. If it was a different color, say for example this, the black is going to stand out more, so I might do that half inch punch, tape this down, and make a, a consistent line across the top. Okay, so there's three options, right? Completely tr trace and completely hand cut, punch and trim to fit, and then the last is tape a piece over and just use a rectangle. Okay, that looks pretty good. A little bit bigger than I wanted it to be, but most of it's going to disappear as soon as we get some ink on it. <clears throat> That's kind of pretty too, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't even look at this side. So this... This, um, this album is based on the Graphic 45 kit. Um, there's some things that I, I uh, have done a little bit differently, but it is definitely based on the Graphic 45 kit by, oh, her name escapes me, Nostalgia, Nostalgitique is her channel, and her name escapes me at the moment, but I'll, I'll get it before we finish up. Okay, so that is the inside liners. It looks good. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do, and I was waiting for my um, no fray uh, or fray check to dry on my ribbon. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some ribbon. So the ribbon is going to go around the entire book. Now what I don't know yet is if I want it to tie in the front or on the side. 
So I'm gonna pull in, we're gonna start putting together the cover, and then before we add the embellishments, we're gonna figure out where the, um, the ribbon is gonna go, whether it's gonna have a bow in the front or on the side. So you're gonna start, you need two of these. These are four and a half by eight and a half, four and a half by eight and a half. You're gonna need two. And um, if you lay them side by side, you're gonna round the corners, top and bottom, on the left panel, top, uh, on the left panel, left side, right panel, right side. So this is the front cover. The next thing we're going to do is we're looking for our three and five eighths by seven and one eighth. Three and five eighths by seven and one eight inch black cardstock panel. And I need to write that down someplace else. Or mat. And we're going to add this red paper, which is three and a half by seven, three and a half by seven, and we're just going to center it here. Okay. Now in in the kit, the club kit, she uses the cardstock out of um, one of the packages, um, it's either the roses or the ephemera cards instead of black cardstock. <clears throat> now this is going to go here. So here's where we need to start making it. Well, not yet. So now we have a four inch circle cut from one of the cut aparts. So the back side looks like the honeycomb and there is an ephemera card cut apart and it is, um, horizontal. Now the ephemera card that has this sentiment on it in, in the ephemera package is vertical so it's not it doesn't have the little flower showing on the sides which is what we want. So we're gonna uh, cut a four inch circle and then a four and one eight is that right? No sorry four inch circle for the black card stock and three and seven eight inch circle diameter for um, the cut apart. <clears throat> Now what I used is I used this tool to make my circles because I don't have any punches that large. But for the class, I'm going to have these cut out for you. <clears throat> okay, and I didn't show you, but I'm inking the edges of everything. Okay, so that's going to be a feature on the cover. And then I cut this strip out of the cut apart. It's in a world of roses be a sunflower, and it repeats twice. So I cut it in half, and we're going to ink it and mat it on here. Actually, I'm going to hold off on that just a little bit. It's time to start making a decision about where the ribbon goes. Hey everyone, okay, so I made some decisions about the ribbon and the ribbon is going to be centered and we're gonna wrap it um, around and put the bow right here. So I'm gonna find my center line. We're gonna use some tape uh, to help us hold that ribbon in place before we put our paper down. <clears throat> Four and a half, four and a quarter, four and four and three eighths. That's what we need to do. Four and three eighths.
I'm marking all the way across because I'm going to put tape all the way across. Four and three eighths. And then our last mark is here, four and three eighths. And it doesn't have to be perfect, just close to center. Okay, so there's our line. I'm going to use this nice big fat tape and try to find my marks. I can see this one pretty clearly. Okay, so just, I want to go on the inside of this because we're going to have paper that stops uh, shy of the score line. And then we want to stop short on the other side. The tape will also help, um, it's not straight, oh wow, it tore. The tape will also help um, cover up your, uh, the grommet. Burnish this nice. We're gonna add our ribbon, then we can decorate. Yay! <clears throat> <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> so, because we are gonna wrap it on the closure, or I mean, uh, tie it on the closure, that means we want to center the ribbon here. So I'm holding my center line. And I'm using 5 8 inch tape, which turns out to be the perfect width for this. It's okay if you're wider or narrower. It's just meant to hold it in place until we get our paper on. And also soften the effects of the grommet. Oops. So as you can see, it's not perfectly straight. That's okay. That's going to get covered with paper. Actually, I need to curve it. Because <clears throat> it's going to need a little bit of give around the corners. How's that going to be? You know what? I didn't think about it, but we could actually put tape right here because it's going to be hidden by the ribbon. So let's do that. That should have been a single strip of tape. I was thinking there was a break, but only on the paper, not on the ribbon. Okay, we'll do the same thing on this side. Shoot. All right. Okay. There we go. Okay, you want to verify your orientation. Make sure your pockets are on the bottom.
and I'm ready to add my cover. <laughs> that tape won't let go of me. All right. make sure there's plenty of glue over my ribbon. Now we're ready for the back side. <clears throat> you can use tape here if you want to. side with the grommet so you're going to feel that when you lay your paper down. It's right there. But between the tape and the ribbon it should help soften that. But make sure you've got plenty of glue all the way around both sides of the grommet. Now we have the Let It Be, I think it's called Let It Be, no, Busy Be. Uh, that's gonna go right here. And it looks like I need to cut that a little bit shorter. <clears throat> so, let's see, this is one and a half by seven and three quarters, one and a half by seven and three quarters. And then it fits just inside the grommet lines, or yeah, the grommets. I'm gonna double check my orientation again, because this does have orientation, the stripes don't. Okay, this is the right way. <clears throat> There's slight word, there's light words in the background.
just hold that into place for a second. Okay, that's good. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is add our mat, our red mat, to make sure I'm on the front. Yep, and I think I'm just gonna center that nice and simple. Now we'll add our circle embellishment. I don't want it centered, I want it toward the top and then I'm gonna put a sentiment down here. I want to make sure all my edges are down so it doesn't grab on anything. If you wind up using your journal and carrying it around in your purse or your backpack, you want to try to make sure your edges are down so it doesn't catch on anything. Okay. In the end, I will probably go back around all my edges one more time and make sure everything is, is down. Okay, so I trimmed out this polka dot paper and I'm going to add this sentiment like so. So I haven't decided if I want to put a chevron or um, fishtail on the end here or just leave it straight and have it stop at the edge of the paper. So I'm, I'm thinking about that right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and add this strip because its placement won't change on, on here. And so all I'm looking for is basically an even border around it. Same top, bottom, and end. So these three sides have an even border. And then we'll make a decision about whether or not we want a fishtail. I think I'm just gonna leave it straight. And the reason is uh, I don't want it to snag on anything. So we're gonna trim this. right here, I think, use that as a straight line. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I like it offset, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna trim it right there, as soon as I find my pencil. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, and now we're just gonna add it just like so. I'm trying to decide if I want to cover up that black stripe or not, and I think I do. Okay, so we're going to ink that edge all the way around, and we're going to lay down this little embellishment. So this is just the polka dot paper and um, one of the uh, cut aparts <coughs> from the uh, 12 by 12 sheet. <coughs> I'm using this black stripe as my guide. Lovely, okay. Now normally I would be putting chipboard behind a lot of this stuff, but again, I want it to be practical so I'm keeping things low profile. Okay, so this is from the Cut Apart page in the 12 by 12 collection pack too, and it goes here. And I don't think I, yeah, I did. Ink doesn't seem to be showing that much. Uh, let's see, what do I want to do? Do I want to keep it like this or do I want to do a chevron? And do I want to trim off the red? So many options. I'm going to leave the red on and I think I'm going to leave it square as is. And this is a border strip on the cut apart page. And we're just going to center it. <clears throat> Good grief. Now I trimmed this from the um, the border sheet and uh, it, this red band is actually wider, but I cut it crooked. So then I recut it. Um, so your red band is going to actually be a little bit wider. And that's the way it should be. Um, I made a mistake, so I had to make mine a little bit narrower. So don't worry if it doesn't look the same. I'm just uh, going over the area where the ribbon is to make sure it's good and tight. So we've got the front, back, <clears throat> and inside liners done. Now we've got some embellishments we're going to put on inside on each of these pockets. So this is a cut apart strip that says life is beautiful. We have two of those. <clears throat> and then we have two strips that are the same width as, as your pocket. And just as a reminder, those are four And three eighths, four and three eighths, and then the strip, the decorative strip, is three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to start out by centering the life is beautiful. And I'm just eyeballing it with my grid. Stock. 
I want these to be roughly the same, but it's not that critical because you're going to have a whole bunch of stuff in between the front and the back. So if it doesn't line up, no one's going to see it. <clears throat> Okay, same thing. We're going to center this. There we go. Okay, be right back. Okay, next we're gonna make an insert for um, the pockets uh, on the inside liner. So both of these pockets are going to have an insert. We're gonna start here. So for this piece of paper, it needs to be eight by four. So eight by four, and you're gonna score at two and three quarters. You're going to score at two and three quarters. Then for your second piece, we're going to join these to make it like a card. The second piece needs to be, sorry, seven and a half by four, seven and a half by four. So this is going to be the back piece. And this is going to be the top like this. So you're going to fold that under and it's going to lay just like this. Now what we're going to do is put glue on three of the four sides, this side, this side, and this side. And once we attach it, it's going to be a little pocket. Okay. So this is directional. So this piece is not, but this piece is. So what you want when you attach it and open it you want this to be right side up. So see where it says buzz? So make sure that you're scoring on the correct end, okay? So you need to place it in your scoreboard with the buzz facing to your left, okay? Or just lay it in and then if you've got it this way, you know, don't score there, flip it around, score on that side. Okay, just a thin glue line across the score and both sides. And then we're gonna join these two pieces. So this one you're gonna round the top corners, not the bottom because of the score line, you're gonna have um, a right angle down there. Okay, I just wanna make sure this is all even. Burnish that into place. Okay, so there you go, you've got a little fold down and inside that will go a small ephemera card. Okay, then in the closed position we're going to add this large ephemera card. So we're going to trim this down so we have a nice mat all the way around it. <clears throat> So I think I'm going to take off an eighth of an inch to start. And I'm trimming a little bit from each side. <sighs> we want to take off a little more. So we've got a pretty big border down there and up here. So once we get it the right width, we're going to round the top, the top corners only. Okay, so I trimmed a little from each side, and so basically what I have now is it's three quarter inches wide. After trimming it, now I'm going to round the corners. And this Creative Memories uh, 
corner rounder happens to be the right Go. Doesn't that look nice? So we're going to ink it and lay it in. And I'm only rounding the top corners because the two bottom corners are at a 90 degree angle, but that's really a personal preference, whatever you guys like. <clears throat> okay, looks good. And I'm using the journal side up. But that's also a choice. If you guys don't want to use the journal side up, there's another option because there's plenty of room to put a journal on the inside. <clears throat> We're just gonna center it. Left, right. Oops. So there you go, your little pocket. So the next thing we're going to do is, what are we doing next? Well, we're gonna make a belly band. That's what we're gonna do. So we've got this strip and it's three quarter inches wide by eight and a half inches. Um, and it's going to go all the way around this to make a belly band. And you want to make sure that um, you leave a little space in here so that if you put photos or additional journaling or ephemera inside, that this band will continue to go up and down. So this, I'm going to mark a line. I've wrapped it around snugly. I'm going to, I'm going to put a little line, and I know when I join it, I want to give it a little bit more space, like maybe, maybe an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to put my glue just below that line. There we go, and I'm going to recrease. So that should easily slip off and on. Once my glue dries, I don't want to get it hung up on anything. So you want to make sure you've got uh, plenty of uh, play there so that you can get a couple of things inside. Then we're going to add this decorative red strip across the front, which makes it fun. And let me see, did I ink it? Yes, I did. And then we're going to make another one of these. I forgot to tell you the size of this. This is, I think, a half inch. Yeah, half inch wide strip. Okay, and then um, we're going to want to put something decorative here. I'm not sure what, but um, if nothing else, we can just certainly use, uh, punch out um, a circle. Let me see if I can find something I like. Oh, and we need a circle on top, too. You need a yellow circle. I don't know if this is going to be too, no, that's right. Okay, so I'm going to put a little tab on top, yellow there, and then I'm going to go with a one inch circle and layer in a piece of red. So this is going to get inked and go right on the back. I actually don't like that very much. I think I'm just going to lay it right on top. So just, uh, oh, look at that. <laughs> you want to cover just half of your circle. And I'm going to lay it right on top like so, centered. And I'm just doing this visually. 
back in now my ruler. And then I'm gonna get my one inch punch and we're gonna punch something red to go here. So let me find a little scrap of red. Actually, kind of like that. You see, let me see what the B looks like in here. Yeah, I like it. I'm gonna do the B. Actually, maybe I'll save the B for a one inch punch. On a different one. And then I'll still look for an option. There's not a lot of scraps left. <laughs> So I gotta do some digging. One inch. I don't know if I like that. Let's do the B. And then we'll put our little B here. How's that? Good. Lick it. I like it. Um, you could also put, uh, well, it's really just personal preference, right? So pick something you like. That's fun. I like the bee. I'm pretty happy with that. Cool. Lovely. And then, oh, that, my punches are so dull. Look at it bent my paper. Might be time to invest in some more. This is not necessary, but I kind of want to put something here just to make it look a little more finished. So there we go, isn't that pretty? Okay, and then, like I was saying, I think we need a little something, something there. Let me see what I can come up with. This is the one inch punch. This might be too big of a circle. Might need to do something a little smaller. Hmm. No, it's about the right size, but I don't like that pattern. So, let's try. A polka dot. I kind of like that. So that's what I'm going to do for now. I'm just putting a dot of glue in case I change my mind and want to do something else. So another something else could be something fussy cut, uh, you know, that has a little more um, dimension. Dimension, I guess, more edges. So this just looks like a nice little button here. Okay, there we go. So that's essentially finished. Now we're gonna work on the second one. So the second one, we're gonna use these polka dots and we get all my bits. This is going here too. Um, <clears throat> okay, I have to think for a second. The I think this is the back and this is the front. And this isn't necessarily dimensional. I think that's what it's gonna look like, but let me double check. Yeah, mm, no, the, the uh, dots. We're going to be on the inside like this. So that's going to be the small pocket. Okay, so we need to round our corners. Top and bottom. This is four by eight. Four by eight. Now on this one, we're only going to round the top corners. 
and that's because we're going to score here and attach it, right? So we only need the top corners. And I'm going to re-ink where I just trimmed. Okay, we need to score this. Where do we score it? It's going to get scored at one and three quarters. Let me see. I don't, I'm not sure. Why is that so hard? I'm just going to measure this one. I can't remember what I did. One and three quarter. So we're going to score this at one and three quarters. So we're going to lay it here. It's going to go like this. So when it's closed, we want to make sure this is in the right direction. And based on the image, it could, could go kind of either way. I'm just looking to where, I think this is the right direction, um, how the flower leaves are, are going. And I think this is probably the right direction. So I'm going to score this end <clears throat> at one and three quarters. Now, I don't usually score on both sides. I usually only score once and then fold, but when I'm using decorative paper where there's ink on it and a possibility of cracking, I like to score on both sides with my Teflon, which is not sharp at all, um, and sort of train my fibers to go in place in the hopes that I'm not going to crack it when when I fold it. The other thing you can do is just add a tiny bit of moisture and all that helps. All that goes a long way to helping you line up the fibers. So this is the side that's likely to crack. And of course, if it cracks on red, it really shows up. And you can cover most of it with ink, but it's best if it doesn't crack in the first place. I'm being gentle with it, and it looks pretty good. Okay, so we're ready to attach these two. So I'm going to trace with glue to create that little pocket. Remember, the more glue you use, the smaller your pocket gets. Because as you lay it down, the glue is going to spread. So just keep that in mind. There we go. Got our little Hello Sunshine card. It's going to go into the pocket. We're going to trim this down. When we're done trimming, it should be about three quarters of an inch uh, smaller than it is, or uh, three and three quarters of an inch wide total. <clears throat> Let me check it and see how that looks. I'm happy with that, so I'm going to round my corners, ink it, and lay it in. And rounding only the top corners to match the corners that are existing. I'm using mahogany ink, by the way. Powder puff mahogany. I think in this collection, the journal side of the cards are really pretty. Uh, <clears throat> And they make for excellent fussy cutting if you if you choose to do that. A little heavy there.
And there we go. Okay, we're gonna do a couple circles and a belly band. What did I do it? Here it is. And the belly band's gonna be essentially the same. <clears throat> If you push it down, then you get a nice square fold. And in this case, I'm not going to draw the line because I'm just going to give it some extra wiggle room um, folding it over. Now, last time... I put my seam in the back, but you can really put it in the front and cover it with that circle. So the circle would pretty much cover it. So it's just an, just an option. You know what? This is not the right width as this. It's not the same as this one. I don't know why it's so much thicker, but it shouldn't be. Um, let's see how wide is this one. This one is three quarters of an inch. And this is an inch, so I'm just going to trim it down to three quarters of an inch with my X-Acto knife. And um, I have a hard time holding this in place, so what I do is I use my temporary tape to help me hold it in place, and then just use my X-Acto knife to trim off a quarter inch. I don't know how I missed that. <clears throat> yeah, and the red strip should be a half inch. So we'll see if I've got that right. Oh, you know what? <laughs> That's because I was using the wrong strip. I got it mixed up with a piece of scrap. No big deal. Now I have two. <laughs> I can use that strip someplace else. Okay, and um, in this case, I am going to um, put my seam in the front and cover it with um, my circle. <clears throat> okay, so here's our half inch red strip. We're going to lay that in like so, and it's inked and ready to go. And then I'm going to cut out a couple circles. I kind of like, I'm going to see if I can get most of this kind in a circle, and it's going to go in the back. It does, it works. Okay, so I'm going to put that in the back. I think I'll do another yellow circle. I just kind of like the way it pops against the black. Oops, that's, am I doing, yeah, that's one and a, I said it was one and a half, it's one and a quarter, I take that back. <clears throat> and then, let's find something fun to put on top of that one. <clears throat> Got another B. A yellow on a yellow might not work. And I need the smaller punch. Here it is. do this little bee here. Okay. I like the red on the yellow. But just dig through the scraps until you find something you like.
I think I'm going to put him at an angle with the flower on the bottom. Okay, and then we're going to use this kind on the back, ink it. are these I like this a lot so I think I need just a smaller punch like a three-quarter inch punch to put the B in the middle or you can offset it I like that black polka dot <clears throat> so I'm gonna do another black polka dot at one inch and then um, I'll find something cute to put in the middle of it. Even if I fussy cut a B, I might do that or offset it. I don't know. We'll see. Ink it and lay it down. Okay, and I'm going to put it right over my seam, which is already getting hard to see. <clears throat> There we go. All right, then I'm gonna figure out a way to trim this down a little bit and I'll get another B and we'll put them on here. I just think that's super cute. Okay, those are our inserts. So let's pull our book back in and these are gonna go inside our pockets. Okay, moving right along. When I come back, we're gonna start working on the notebooks that go inside. <clears throat> I didn't even think about that, but it would have been kind of cool to line these dots up with that. You have to put them in the pocket first and figure that out. Well, I don't know. It's kind of cool. All right. Um, I'll be back shortly, and then we'll start working on the notebooks that go on the inside. Okay, everyone. Um, we're going to start covering our first uh, notebook, um, and this notebook is the... The graph inside and this is the paper that I've chose so we're going to use the front the A side here and um, did I do that right I uh, yeah we're gonna use this A on both sides so the larger sunflower is gonna go on the cover <clears throat> and this is four by eight, four by eight. So I'm gonna show you as soon as I lay this down what I did to the corners here to soften them. So I put a nice curve on the corner, top and bottom, and then on the back side, <clears throat> I cut it at an angle to match the notebook. I need to move that down a little. So I just laid it in here by hand and trimmed it while I held it. And then I just rounded both ends. <clears throat> okay, so there's A, and then here's the back. Inked and ready to go. Now, if you're uncomfortable holding it in place, then what you do is you put it uh, inside your notebook and make it uh, so that it is even. And I'll show you what I mean with another piece of paper in just a second. And then trace it and then cut, cut on your trace line if you're uncomfortable with the other method. So the other method would be to slide your designer paper inside, make it flush top and bottom like so, and then trace it. And then you'll have that, the little piece that you need to cut out. So I'll draw that, 
show you what I mean. Oops. Tracing my curve. So there's the little curve that you would cut off. And then to do the back, same thing. You push it all the way to the, um, the end. Make sure it's flush with the top. And the hard part is getting it all the way inside because of the fold. Flush, flush. And then draw your little line. And then when you when you cut it, you cut both. And then this one needs to be straight. So there's your curve and there's your diagonal. And then when you center this, when you pull it down and center it, you should have a nice border on both sides. Okay, so there's two, two different techniques. I just literally held it in place um, and did a little tick mark and just put the tip of the corner in my rounder and I held it in place and just trimmed it with my hands on both corners, okay? So those are some different options to get that done. Okay, so we're done with the cover here. We're gonna move on uh, to the next notebook insert. Okay, notebook number two. This is the sketch, and the final one will be the um, ruled. So in on the 12 by 12 sheet, what you're going to do is you're gonna cut a strip that's one and a half inches, and it's right here. You're gonna cut one and a half inches by eight. Then you're gonna take the 12, what's left of the 12 by 12, put it in your in your trimmer and score at four. So First, trim off an inch and a half, and then trim this four by eight, and then you should get your let it be pretty much centered, okay? So I'm gonna do this with you guys so you can see what I'm doing. So if we take our paper and make it flush, top, bottom, left, and to the edge of this, I'm just gonna use my little corner cutter and I'm going to push this in until it hits the notebook. I gotta get out of my own way. Okay, there we go. We're gonna do the same thing down here. The second layer of cardstock should stop you from going any further. Then we're gonna go the other way, placing this inside, pushing it to the top and bottom. And you want it as close to the seam as possible. Then we're gonna trim that off. Okay, now we're gonna push it down so that it's flush on this edge. Push that, make sure it's all the way in and flush. And I moved it up.
By the way, once we have this finished, um, you can buy additional inserts. So once you've used up what you have, you can set those aside and then you can just buy blanks to go back in your cover, okay? Now, because we trimmed this off here, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna continue the pattern this way. So we're gonna push it in, we're gonna trim our edges just like we did on the front. And in this case, we only have to trim these two edges and we're gonna lay it in. And then on the second piece, we'll do the corner rounding. So as you can see, we're just going to continue that pattern around to the back. Ink it. Okay, and then we're going to extend it by adding this strip. So we're going to have a little bit of color blocking. Okay, and then we're going to want to round these corners. So I'm going to do what I did in, on the front and bring that up. And this time I'm not going to use my punch. This time I'm going to use my curved scissors. They make curved scissors, but these actually I got in the manicure section. They're nail scissors. They work fine. I don't use them very often, but they work perfect for this kind of application. Okay, perfect. We're gonna ink it, lay it in. Oops, goes this way. <laughs> I like it both ways. Okay, that's it for the front and back of this out of this notebook. Be back shortly. Okay, we've got our last notebook to cover, and here's the patterns I've chose. So this is going to go on the cover. This is going to go on the back, and I went ahead and rounded and trimmed my corners while I was away, since we've done it twice already, two different ways. <clears throat> <laughs> Guess who joined me? <laughs> uh, I want to take a moment to thank everybody for coming over and spending some time with us over here on Scrap and Create. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, you know, if, one of the things that you could do for us that doesn't cost anything is if you like, share, and subscribe. Um, if you subscribe, you'll be notified every time we have new content. And when you like or hit that thumbs up, it goes a long way to helping us be recommended to other people to view. So if you would just take a minute to do that, I would really appreciate it. And we'll continue to bring you, you know, free content um, here on our channel. You can also join us over at our Facebook group, Scrap and Create. And that's where our customers share their their projects and ideas and also um, it's a great place for you to give us a shout out and let us know what you'd like us to work on next um, so we keep some general information over there if you go to our website www.scrapandcreate.com and you subscribe over there 
um, one you'll be notified uh, via email every time we have new content, new products, um, and just general information for Scrap and Create. We'll send you an email. We don't send a lot of emails. Um, I think you know a couple a month is is about it. So we don't send emails just to send emails. We only send them to you when we have something new to share. So that is our last. So let's bring in the two that we finished. So we've got one, two, three, yay. All three of these are ready to go, or at least the covers have been done. So I'm gonna take a break and do a little bit of housekeeping here and uh, I'll be back soon. Okay, everyone, this is Daphne and we are going to wrap up this project. So the last thing we need to do is cover, and I did this offline, I didn't realize um, I wasn't recording, so I'm gonna go over it now is um, we're going to add this uh, designer paper to the inside and back of each one of the notebooks. So what I did is I tucked this inside the pocket and then I'm gonna trace around this edge and hopefully you can see it. And then we're gonna cut along that line. So I'm gonna freehand cut this but you can use a straight edge, whatever works for you. And then we're going to do that once for the front, which is gonna go this way, and then once for the back, and it's gonna have a different slant. So three of them are going to be left-handed, three of them are gonna be right-handed, and then the piece that we trim off, I'll show you as soon as I get this cut, is gonna become the pocket liner for the opposite. So my left-handed pocket cover, once trimmed, is creating the right-hand pocket liner. And I'm, it only goes back and forth because I want an alternate pattern. So this becomes my liner. And I take this and I flip it over and it becomes, I'm sorry, this becomes the pocket cover, this becomes the pocket liner. So that's how I did that. You're gonna do that a total of three times. Three for the left, three for the right. Um, and then cover each one of these accordingly. Okay, that is the end of the project. Now I did some, in, some additional inserts with um, papers that I had left over. So based on what scraps you have left over, you can use, uh, and I saved everything because I knew I was gonna wanna use little bits like this um, to embellish and add to my journal pages. So save everything and then kind of go through and decorate your pages. So I did, I did the first, the middle, and the last page of each one of the journals, at least for a start, and I still have scraps left over. Okay, thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create, and that is Let It Be Journal.